Okay, so this is my second try to get this video to record. Uh, so let's try this again. So I am doing my sermon for my Preaching 201 class. And are you ready? Here we go. All right, I'm going to start with prayer. God, I just um, thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you for um, any opportunity that I have to study your word because every time I read your word, God, it's life and it is life changing. And even though I'm sitting in a room in my basement with um, no one down here but me and a cat, God, I know that your word doesn't return void. And so I pray for anyone that hears this, God, that you would just use it um, to bring life and to encourage us. And to draw us closer to you, God, to shift us and to change us into who you have created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I'm going to be talking um, about the body of Christ. So, have you ever wondered where you fit in the body of Christ? Um, are you a finger? Are you a toe? I work with children a lot. And the question we get asked is, who's the rear end? Um, because that's funny. Uh, we refer to the church as a body, and there's tons of scripture that talks about the body, yet many of us struggle with how we fit, and where's our part, and what does that look like, and how do I work within a body? Um, sometimes things don't feel right. Sometimes we feel like, you know, we're trying to put a square peg in a round hole and carve the edges to make it fit, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't fit quite, quite right. And it's important because God calls us to work as one body. But if we don't learn how to do that, then we miss out on something um, that's valuable and necessary uh, in this walk with Christ. And especially as part of, a, of the bigger picture of the kingdom church and, and who God's called us to be. So let's start with our scripture. We're going to start in Ephesians 4 and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope, that when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And I'm going to jump jump down to verse uh, 11. And it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. I love these verses in Ephesians. Um, I'm a church girl. I was raised in church my whole life. Uh, I, I have spent, I have spent from the time, I, I don't even remember not being in church. I, I was in Sunday school. I did GAs. I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. Um, as I got older, I started going to some different denominational churches. And I, I just, I love the church. And while there are things that I dislike that I have seen the church becoming, I believe with all of my heart that the church is the biggest blessing to the world that God could give the world outside of salvation and his son because the church is to be a representation of who he is. Um, but in order to do that, we as a body have to function correctly. And that requires us as individuals to walk out this path that God has called us to walk. We're called to be one body. And, and, and there are so many scriptures. Romans 12, 4 reminds us that for, for just as each one of us is a body with, mem with many members and these bodies have different functions, that all the members do not have all the same functions. So that means that what I'm called to do and what you're called to do and what he's called to do and what she's called, to, it's all different because we're all created as, as members to create one body. It takes everything. It takes all of us. And like our natural bodies, our spiritual bodies are knit together in order to function. So it takes the arm. It takes the person that's going to serve and clean up after the church fellowships just as much as it takes the pinky toe or the person that's going to plan to get the fellowship together to begin with. Um, everybody has to find what that function is. And I will tell you, 
like I said, I'm a church girl. I've been in church my whole life. And I can tell you that I have taken 20, 30, 80 spiritual gifts tests. I had someone just this week, another team that I'm a part of, wants us to take a spiritual gifts assessment. I, I know what animal I am. We've all done that one. I, I mean, there's just so many things out there to find your giftings. But I always struggle with the fit. The problem is, is that we can find our giftings, but if we don't learn how those giftings fit into the body, then we miss out on what that looks like. And the fit is important because the fit is what, what puts us as a body and puts us in unity so that we can accomplish and do what God has called the church to do. So I want to take a closer look at verse 12. And it's and in verse 12, so, so 11, if we go back to verse 11, it's talking about Christ himself, um, how he's given us. And, we, and a lot of people, this is the five, you know, the, 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 five, the five ministry gifts, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And he gives those gifts in verse 12 to equip his people for works of service. So when I read this, I wanted to know, equip, so, so, so if he's going to equip me, then that means he's going to have to teach me and, and show me how to do that. So I, I did a word search on that equipped. And in the Greek, in that, in that verse, that word um, in the Greek is, is kartartiso. And it, it means to get ready or to prepare or to adjust. And so I love words. So I'm just going to keep following this back until I figure out what this says. And so when it says that it's adjusting, what it's saying is that it is literally like a shifting, like when a doctor sets a bone. So think about that, that, that shift that, that it takes to put that bone into place, to get things back where they're supposed to be. That's what that means, that equipping is that shift. God's end game has always been that the equipping process is what prepares us to function in the body. And the reason it's so important, because as we go in and read in verse 3, is so that we reach unity in the faith. That it takes that shifting to keep us unified so that we're all doing what we're called to do so the body can function and do what God called the church to do. Alright? So here's the deal. There's going to be a shifting. And it's going to look different for everybody. You know, we hear shifting and we're like, okay, oh, wait a minute. Now, what does this mean? What is this going to mean? You know, shifting can be a lot of things. It can be a calling uh, to go back to school. Many people are in school right now getting their degree. I'm doing this class for school right now, getting my degree. I have found personally that a lot of time the shifting comes through the trials we face in life through the trials that force us to shift from where we are to where God has for us. And I will tell you that I have walked through some shifting in my life the last few years where I could literally feel the breaking of structures and things that I had built up in my life. Um, four years ago, I worked for a ministry. And I walked into work one day, and my boss had been fired. And the board had dissolved my position. And they offered to let me stay, but it was very apparent by what they were doing. They wanted me to leave. And all of it came from the hands of my mentor and one of my closest friends, people I went to church with. And I spent the next three years, I, I can't even tell you how many times I wrote in a journal, God, I just want my life back. I just want my life back. And then just through some amazing friends and people that just really loved me, um, I realized that I needed to lean into this and figure out what God was trying to teach me through this. Because we have the promise that, not, that, that, that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And so I wanted to know what the purpose was. So I began to just lean into that brokenness. And that is where um, this understanding of the scripture came from. Is because, because of what happened, lots of things changed in my life. I went back to school because I found myself 
unemployed and overqualified or they wanted a piece of paper. And so in a week from today, Saturday, a week from today, I'm graduating with my bachelor's degree and with a 4.0. And I would have never gone back to school. Um, because of what happened, because of the shifting, my husband and I moved uh, a couple of towns over. Uh, we were called to a church in this area where we live. And my husband serves as the worship pastor, and I play the piano and, and serve as an administrative um an administrative person with with the with the day to day runnings of the church, and and because of because of, of of our willingness to shift in the midst of the brokenness, um, we're part of a thriving congregation and a church that loves us and loves our kids and and God has used us as part of this body. Um, but we had to let God shift us to that place. We had to learn to let go and let God shift and adjust these things in our life. And I will be very honest with you. I've lost dreams. I've lost plans that I thought I would have forever. But when we let things go, when we release the friend that hurts us, something shifts in our hearts. When we let go of the dream job, the job that we think that we're going to be at forever, the perfect house, the planned future, the my of my life, everything that I think that makes me me, everything that you think that makes you you, he shifts us. And through that shifting, we grow. We don't know what's happening, but we shift and we grow. All of it is to mature me. Not just for my benefit, not just for your benefit, but it's for the benefit of the body of Christ as a whole. We have to be willing to surrender through this process. And I will tell you, and just be very honest, that what I discovered about myself is that I really like the idea of surrender. I can sing 800 worship songs about surrender. One of my favorite hymns is I Surrender All. And I realized that I like the idea of surrender a whole lot more than I like actually surrendering. But it's important. And, and the shifting is happening every day around us because there is a never-ending call to unity. It's a daily equipping. We daily need the adjustments as part of the maturing process. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but I find myself sometimes reverting back to old thought patterns and old habits. And God goes, wait, wait, wait. I've shifted that. I've worked on that. I need you. We got to get you where you're supposed to be because I'm growing you and I'm maturing you. Um, in closing, I want to tell you a story. It is uh, one that is talked about in my household with hushed reverent tones. And it's the one that made me give back my mom of the year button. Because it, it's just great. But it's the best story in relation to this. So um, several years ago, my son was playing football. He was in seventh grade. And I picked him up from football practice one night. And he was like, you know, Mom, he goes, I, was, I somebody tackled me. I was on the ground. And this kid stepped back and stepped on my wrist. And it hurts really bad. And I think it's broken. So I'm a good mom. I, I'm, I'm considerate and, and caring and kind 80% of the time. And so... I looked at it and it wasn't broken, like it wasn't bleeding and there was nothing broken. There were no bruises. And I was like, son, I really think you're okay. And he's like, mom, it just it hurts really bad. It just hurts really bad. And so because this is my dramatic child, um, I kind of have to filter sometimes with him. And so I'm like, well, we'll just kind of watch it tonight. And we had a birthday party that night, and my friend, came, our friends came over, and he actually coaches football, and Andrew kept complaining about his wrist, and I said, you know, Tucker, will you look at this? And he looked at it, and I mean, I'm telling you, not a bruise on the kid, not a scratch on the kid. And so I, because I'm a good mom, said, you know what, we'll take it to get x-rayed and see what the doctor says, just because it hurts so bad. So the next morning we got up, I took him to the doctor, they x-rayed it, the doctor looked at it and said, you know, it's not broken, it looks okay, it's probably just sprained a little. And so I told him to suck it up, he had a football game to go to, it wasn't broken, I took him to the doctor, here's some Tylenol, let's go. So that was on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday night around 9 o'clock, I get a phone call. 
and it's his doctor's office. And the doctor goes, hey, this is Dr. Mulberry. He goes, I looked at Andrew's x-ray after the, because we had seen like the nurse practitioner. Pr practitioner. He said, I looked at Andrew's x-ray and there is a little hairline fracture and the lady just missed it. Um, so you need to bring him in tomorrow for us to put it in a cast. And um, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I really had um, a moment where I thought, do I have to tell him it's broken? Because I had really told him to stop complaining about it, that stop complaining it hurt, that it wasn't broken, I had taken care of it. And so he had learned to function. I mean, he had gone to football practice Monday afternoon for four hours. And it hurt him, and it bothered him, but he still went, and he still functioned. But he lived with a broken bone, in his, in his wrist for four days. Five days if you count Friday. And I took him in. And they shifted it a little bit. Kept putting it in a cast. He was in it for a couple months. And it was good as new. And it just is such a great representation. Because when you think about the shifting. A lot of us are going through that, that process of finding our place. Because... We do want to be part of the body and we do want to be in unity. And we've been shifted in painful ways. But we're struggling in the shifting. And many of us learn to work with deficits, just like Andrew did. We learn to live with things not right. Or we learn to live with unfulfilled dreams. Or we learn to live with wherever we're, we're at. But we have to remember that it's not about us. It's about a body. It's about the body of Christ. And it's an important calling and we're part of that. And so when God shifts us, it's to be able to allow his church to function. And it's just so far beyond us. And so we need to stop living with deficits. We need to stop living in those places of pain. And we need to trust God and let him shift and move us. So that we're where we're supposed to be. So that the body can do what it's supposed to do. So I want to ask you this question as we close. Where is God trying to shift you? What are you keeping him from letting him. What are you keeping him from moving and doing in your life? So that he can place you where he's called you to be. Is he asking you to let go of something? Is he asking you to go to something? And it's going to be different. Everybody, for everybody, it's going to be different. You know, maybe you're holding on to unforgiveness and you need to let someone go and say, you know what, God, I'm going to let this go so that you can heal this place in my heart and I can walk with grace for this person so you can move me. Maybe, maybe for some of us, I, I come from a, a background, I worked in addiction recovery and, you know, maybe for some of you, you have a child that's struggling, that's struggling in sin or struggling in addiction. And maybe God needs you to let go of that kid so God can do something with him so he can put you where he needs you to be. Because you may not be able to save your kid, but you may be able to help another mama or another kid that desperately needs your help. Maybe you're like I was and you're holding on to an idea of what you think your life is supposed to be. The perfect house, the perfect kid, the perfect whatever. And you need to let go of that so that God can say, you know what? My plans and my dreams for you are going to be very different than your plans and dreams for yourself. But I promise you it is so much better. And it will be built on a foundation that is never ending and will last. So I'm going to pray. So God, I just pray for everyone listening to this. God, I pray that... God, that we would see the big picture, God, that you shift us to put us where you've called us to be in the body because you have a great plan and a great purpose for the body of Christ. God, and that plan and purpose requires, God, it is mandatory that we let you move and shift and adjust and prepare us so that we can walk in the fullness of what that looks like, God. And that it's important. God, it's important because there is a world that needs you. God, there is a world that needs to know who you are and what you look like and what your heart for them is. And the way that happens is through your body. 
and we are your hands and feet on this earth. So God, I pray that you would just let let us let you shift and move in us to accomplish all that you've called us to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.